Good morning. I am Vibhuti Muta, founder of Project Purpose. And before we start the morning, I'd like to introduce today's unconventional speaker with an un in an unconventional way. I've known Simarjeet for a few years now. And without doubt, he's one of the most inspiring speakers I've worked with. You know, we say that we become fans of these big speakers and authors. When you meet them in person, and you, when you see them on stage, more often, there is a big difference. There is a gap. Simarjeet is one speaker, one inspiring personality I've met who walks the talk. There is no gap in his personality when he's on the stage or when you meet him as a person. He is inspiring in both places. Over a decade as a motivational speaker, Simarjeet's journey is absolutely fantastic. Ten years back, he was into hotel industry and he started his journey when he found his calling in this industry. In ten years from doing small workshops, recently Simarjeet was at, as a speaker at a UN conference. Isn't that fantastic? And here is Simarjeet Singh for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Vibhuti for the kind introduction. Thank you all for being here this morning, for sparing your time to be here. I appreciate that. And the title of today's workshop is, or keynote rather, the four hours that I'll be here with you in this workshop interactive session today. Uh, some of you are like, four hours? Oh my God, <laughs> just figuring out who's listening. The one and a half hour interactive session, two hour max, is going to be about rediscovery, self-rediscovery. What are we really capable of? Where do we stop? How far we are capable of going? Um, the title is inspired by the Sufi philosopher Rumi's quotation which, in which he beautifully said, be like a tree and let the dead leaves drop. And I love those words because they gave me goosebumps. We have so much to learn from nature. Be like a tree and let the dead leaves drop. It's fall now and this is about time plants begin to shed their old leaves without any sort of, a, you know, a, a emotional attachment to what's going away because it's a season to change. Human beings, we have more difficulty letting go of things that we love, yes or no? And that's the whole idea. Things that might have worked for us in the past, there is absolutely no guarantee that they will work in the future. Agree, disagree? Things, strategies, mindsets that brought you here today might not be sufficient to take you to the next level, right? I think um, there's this wonderful, um, Tony Robbins, he talks about this a lot, which, where he says, uh, Old, um, old thinking will create old actions. Uh, so old, old thinking will create old results, right? Uh, I beg your pardon. Old thinking will create old results. You want new results, start with new thinking. And it's my firm belief that actions, thought precedes action every single time, right? It's also my second belief that we have within us the ability to be into different mindsets. Agree? You all been in situations where you felt proud of yourself, you felt good about what you were doing, you all had days like that, and you all had days where you were feeling miserable, you think everything was against you. Do you agree you made different decisions in both those mindsets? Yes? It's my conclusion in the last 11 years in this space of personal improvement and self-discovery and uh, corporate leadership development is this. We all may be equipped with the right skill sets. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Look at the people around you, please. Have a good look at who's here. Have a good look at people around you. You will not see any shortage of skill sets, knowledge, expertise, academic ability, or those sort of things, right? No shortage, absolutely. Why is that? And Harvard University did a research tracking the graduates of the same class who had pretty much the same parameters to get inside the MBA program, pretty much same socioeconomic background, same professors, same curriculum. 10 years time, why are people leading vastly different lives, ladies and gentlemen, why? It is, is their attitude, is their view of life, is their how they're approaching things, is their mindset, that's one conclusion I come to, is their mindset, is how you see the world at large. How do you perceive challenges? How do you perceive opportunities? How do you perceive yourself? What are you capable of? 
right? Sometimes the biggest hurdle in our own growth is our own selves. And that's what I mean when I say, let the dead leaves drop. So let's begin. This is not a lecture by any chance. I love my voice, and <laughs> but I would like to hear your voice too. This is an interactive session where we're gonna get up and interact and you know, just talk to each other. And this is not a I do to you exercise. This is a, what we, a we do together exercise. So you ready for some fun? Yes? We'll see if some learning happens in the process. So let's begin. Deep breath in, please. Shake someone's hand on your right and left. Say hello to the person sitting next to you. And let's begin by giving a reminder. Let the dead leaves drop. Do it now, please. Say it now. Shake the hand of the person on your right and left. And give them this little reminder. Let the dead leaves drop. Fantastic. All right. So... Uh, I want to kill, I'm, I'm an unconventional speaker from an unconventional background. My methodology is unconventional. So I hope this is going to be an unconventional interaction. So if you've selected nice seats for yourself somewhere in the back where you could be a spectator, sorry, that's not going to happen, right? This is a jump in, play, explore workshop. You ready for that? Yes. So you can loosen up those ties if you like. And please stand up. How many of you feel better than before? Raise your hands, please. If you feel better than before. And the only reason why we feel better than before is we've done something that we don't usually do. Agree, disagree? Yes? Once again, old thinking, old actions will create what? Old results. You want new results, you got to risk. You got to try new things. I created a slightly socially embarrassing moment for you here. Something that you don't usually do in a conference room but you were slightly hesitant about it when you reached out. This is about being human again, ladies and gentlemen. And that is what we are losing out. You see, we have a robot now available to teach humanity what it means to be human again. Sophia the robot. Yeah? You seen Sophia? Uh, she's a citizen of Saudi Arabia now. And I had the opportunity of being in the conference where the gentleman from Hanson Robotics, who was the inventor of this robot, of this humanoid robot, presented it to the conference. Do you know how many facial expressions Sophia can make? 120 something facial expressions this robot is designed to make. Most people in most of my talks have a singular expression in the two hours that I'm with them, which is this. <laughs> and I say, hey, we should get Sophia in here. <laughs> Sophia was asked the question, the inventor was asked the question, why do you need a robot with 120 facial expressions? Because it takes a lot of machinery to move the facial muscles. And Sophia's answer was, because I must live and work with human beings. And in order to do that, I must create trust. And in order to create trust, I must have a range of facial expressions. And I'm thinking, wow, here's a machine who's asking us, who's giving us a strong message. Hey humans, don't be a tools of your tools. The famous American philosopher Henry David Thoreau, he said it beautifully. He predicted it a hundred years ago. He said, men and women will become the tools of their tools. The slave of their tools, right? And this is what I want to change. Deep breath in once again. Give a high five to the person sitting next to you. Give them a high five. Give them a high five. And give them this message. Don't be shy. Give them a high five, both hands. And give them this message. Don't become a tool of your tools. Don't become a tool of your tools. You're in charge. You're the master. You're not a slave. Technology is your slave. Technology should be your slave. You're in charge. But what is happening? Today's session is about personal breakthroughs. And the number one reason why people cannot have personal breakthroughs these days is we are a distracted species. Yes or no? With, with these gadgets in our hand, we live in the zombie world. <laughs> you know, constantly, uh, you, you know, there's millions of dollars that go into research to figure out what color your notification should be on these social media apps. They're usually red, right? So you have a sense of urgency. I'm missing on something. I'm missing on something. It's called, there's a name for this. It's called nomophobia, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a real psychological disorder. Staying away from your phone is called nomophobia, no mobile phobia. How about a no vision phobia? We don't suffer from that, do we? We work like uh, robots, like dead bodies, right? And not figuring out any direction, not taking charge of our lives. Nobody's bothered about that. I don't have a sense of direction. I don't know where I'm going. 
I'm okay with that. Mobile phone? Don't take it away from me. <laughs> These are the times we live in. We're distracted. We're addicted to stuff that's happening elsewhere. In the meanwhile, forgetting the biggest stuff is happening to you, your story. What will you make of this opportunity to leave an impact on the world, to explore your full potential, to go beyond your limitations? Be pace setters, not just pace followers. Most, most of people in the life cannot shed their dead leaves, cannot rediscover themselves. We're too busy following the pace somebody else has set for us. We're happy for that. Henry Ford is to blame for this. He stole the, not one single person, but the, the industrial revolution. It said, the factory said, leave your brains outside. Just come, you bring your bodies in to the factory. Stand in front of assembly line thing and tighten this nut bolt nine to five. We'll pay you a lot of money, but don't ask any questions. <laughs> leave your brains outside. We don't need your creativity. We don't need your innovation. We need work faster and cheaper. That was industrial revolution. Agree? Yes? Times have changed now. The era we are living in is the information age today. Is the age of ideas. The age that was gone by was the age of capital, was the age of machinery. The era now, all billion dollar corporations, ideas. People who put ideas into action, Facebook, Amazon, Google. You know, what are these trillion dollar corporations? Not with trillion dollar machinery, trillion dollar ideas. We live in the information age and I'm so glad uh, Dubai Quality Group has organized an event, a platform, a space, a safe space where people can learn, where people can share. And I think they deserve a round of applause for, for having this, put, put this together. I sincerely thank the organizers. I read it somewhere. Ordinary people discuss other people. Ordinary people discuss events. What's already happened. Ordinary people discuss who was wearing what and who was saying what and blah, blah, blah. Extraordinary people talk about ideas. Leaders make ideas happen. And this is the group I'm here today. And I think it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. However, there's one condition. And this whole business about dropping your dead leaves and rediscovering, there's one condition. It's very simple. It comes from Zen philosophy, which says this. When the student is ready, the teacher will emerge. It's conditional. Can we repeat that, please? When the student is ready, the teacher will emerge. Sorry. Now, the teacher might not be in human form. It doesn't have to be. When you're ready, you could pick up a book that could transform your life. You could watch a movie that could transform your life. A little kid could transform your life by something they say. It's not in the environment, it's your readiness to change. It is your acceptance to change. You're not in denial anymore. You're open, you're receptive. You're a student with a mindset to say, hey, there's more that I can do and I want to figure out how. I want to find out the way. That readiness, ladies and gentlemen, is the number one factor with people who are able to achieve personal breakthroughs or not. Some people live in denial. Others live in complaining mode, <laughs> right? I want to share a story with you. The story needs audience participation for sound effects. You ready? Yes? yes. Some of you are not sure. Are you ready? Yes or no? Yes. It's a fun story, but I need your participation. So let's just practice the sound effect I will need is that of a dog crying in pain. Dog crying in pain, howling in pain. That's more like a cat, but let's, it's a nice try, but dog crying in pain. This is good. Yes, let's practice that once again. One, two, three. Fantastic. All right. So here's what is happening. <laughs> when I make this signal, you'll, you'll bring the sound effect in, right? Dolby Digital. So there's this guy who's an animal lover, pet lover, dog lover, okay? He goes for his early morning jog every, every single day, same location by the beach. This one particular morning, he wakes up and goes for his jog and he hears this sound, dog howling in pain. And all of a sudden, his heart, because he's so attached to dogs, he changes his direction and he goes in the other side where the sound is coming from. And he's over there and he sees uh, far along the beach, this old man with a newspaper in his hand, reading the newspaper, enjoying the morning. In front of him, a dog is lying. He's howling and moaning and groaning in pain. He approaches that place. He looks at the dog and he's still making the same sound. He asks the old man, sir, what's wrong with your dog? Why is he howling in pain? He said, ah, forget about him. He's like this all the time. 
How many of you know someone who's like this all the time? <laughs> How many of you know someone who should be here today listening to this? <laughs> we don't need any names, but <laughs> the conversation continues. So he's saying, so why don't you do something about your dog? He's howling in pain. What's wrong with the dog? And he says, son, don't worry about him. He's laying on a wooden floor. He's laying on a plank and he's got a nail stuck inside him. Okay, so there's this nail that is stuck inside his stomach is laying on his side. So why doesn't your dog get up? Why doesn't your dog get up? Son, you carry on with your jogging. He will get up when it starts hurting him bad enough. Right now, it's not hurting him bad enough yet. The pain is tolerable. He's only suffering enough to make this sound. And the same sound a lot of human beings make as well. No? I call it the Global Complainers Association. Global Moaners and Groaners. So we're going to moan and groan and complain and blame and play the victim. Someone else is responsible, not me. It's got to be my parents, got to be the economy, got to be something, not me. And I will moan and groan every morning, complaining how bad my life is. I know where it's hurting. I know what I need to change. But I will not take action. That's the problem. That's why many people are stuck. Once again, take a deep breath in, please. Inhale. High five to the person sitting next to you. Say hello and ask them. Give them this message. Give them this message, please. Take charge of your life. Look them in the eye. Give the message with emotion and conviction. Take charge of your life. Take charge of your life, right? Because if you don't do that, you are allowing someone else you are allowing circumstances to take charge. You're playing the victim. Yeah? It's fun playing the victim for some people, right? You get all the extra attention that you need in the world. The famous Indian philosopher Osho, he said it beautifully. He said, sometimes people who are sick don't want to recover. They don't want to be well. You know why? When they were sick, they get all the extra attention. How are you today? You doing okay? You any better? Can I do something for you? There's all this extra attention. Suddenly and go, I go out and declare to the world, I'm fine today, don't worry about me. And what's gonna happen to the extra attention? <laughs> it disappears, right? So people say, I'm okay playing the victim. At least I'm getting the attention. Everybody's listening to me. Sometimes our economy rewards the same, you know, our corporate world. You go into a restaurant, complain about how bad the food is. They say, okay, sir, dessert is free for you. Right? So we encourage that. Go into the economy section of some airline, you blah, 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 you're a regular flyer, you make a lot of noise. Okay, we upgrade you to business or something. We get rewarded, so we get the wrong signals. But in life, it works differently. Right? We, when we are in the complaining mode, we're losing out. We're not taking charge. We're missing out on so much because we're putting someone else in charge. Well, we're in charge. We must, we got to remember this, right? It's not circumstances. It's not situations. It's not the other things. Your results vary based on the efforts that you put in. So that is my first message is you have to take charge of things around you. You're in charge. You're not the slave of your, of your tools. You're the master. laws that I want to share with you before I begin my formal presentation. Change is hard. Change is painful. Change is confusing. But change is rewarding. And change is a law of nature. It's hard. It's difficult. It's easy to stay in your comfort zone where everything is predictable, right? Even if you don't like it, but at least it's predictable. At least I know what's coming. I don't want to be a situation where I don't know what's coming. I don't want to change myself or those things because I'm comfortable with who I am. Try the simple experiment. Fold your arms as you normally would. Do it now, please. Fold your arms. Excellent. Comfortable. Let's reverse the sequence. The other arm on top, right? And this feels, begins to feel a little unnatural. And you have this urge to go back to this again. We are hardwired to continue doing the same old things, right? But you do that, you get the same old results. My own life has been a story of uh, rediscovery. So in the sense that you have to understand the difference between, um, the similarity between a watermelon and a human brain is they have pretty much the same percentage of water. Agree, disagree? About 5% give and take, right? Same percentage of water, cucumbers, watermelons, human brain, pretty much same percentage of water. What then is the difference, ladies and gentlemen, between the human mind and a vegetable? It's not a very difficult question. 
the ability to think, the ability to take charge. But that, that's what we lose out because this is how we are trained to do, right? To not make our own conclusions about life, about ourselves. We, so, we, get, we start getting living a life where we get so used to being told to do something rather than figuring our own way out. I keep getting emails in my inbox. Is there a job vacancy open in your company for motivational speakers? <laughs> I cannot help but laugh at something like this. I didn't have a job vacancy when I wanted to be a speaker. I didn't look at the newspaper. Is somebody hiring motivational speakers? I figured my own way out. I charted my own way out. I continue to do so. But here is someone who's looking for shortcuts. So once again, deep breath in. Hello, and there are no shortcuts in life. Please remind the person sitting next to you, there are no shortcuts. Say it with conviction, please. There are, there are no shortcuts. Whether in weight loss, or in personal transformation, there are no shortcuts. I know post 11 p.m. on Indian television and other parts of the world, we are sold shortcuts. Take, buy this pill, you will lose weight. No exercise required, you don't need to change your diet and it sells. You know why it sells? <laughs> People are looking for shortcuts. You know, why do I need to sweat it out in the gym when I can buy this pill? Right? And it's funny because we have this American models dubbed in Hindi, which is hilarious. But then people buy this stuff because people are gullible. We're looking for shortcuts. Transformation, there are no shortcuts. It's hard work. It's persistence. It's uh, a lot of efforts. And from nature, the best example that I can derive is the Chinese bamboos. Chinese bamboos, one species of plants, which will take years and years to grow their roots. Okay? If you plant a Chinese bamboo outside in your garden somewhere, the first six months you think, oh, the plant's probably died, it's not even there. You will not see anything happening on the surface. Nothing, not a sign. One year later on, a little tiny shoot is going to emerge. Two years, things get to change a little bit. After two and a half years, something wonderful begins to happen. And that is, in less than 48 hours, they grow to be more than 90 feet tall. If you go to YouTube, just watch time-lapse videos of Chinese bamboo growing. You can see Chinese bamboos growing with your naked eyes. That's when they go. But well, when does that happen? After they have the most complex root network system of any plant. Once that network's root network is in place, boom, they're ready for growth. So nature's telling us there are no shortcuts. I don't hear you guys. There are no shortcuts. You got to grow your roots before you expect Phenomenal growth. How many of you expect phenomenal growth in your life? Raise your hands, please. Right. Excellent. Great. We all do. We all do. We all want to grow and be ourselves and discover our best possible versions. But that doesn't happen until we discover our roots. One of the things I talk about roots here is discovering your core strengths. What are you really good at? What is your professional DNA? I spent eight years in the hospitality industry and I was good at this one question, which was, how can I help you? 11 years as a motivational speaker. Industry has changed, same question to my audiences. How can I help you? This is my, these are my roots. This is my core DNA. This is my professional DNA. It's service. How can I help? How can I serve? You can change a person's industry. You cannot change their DNA. I'm in a different industry. My mindset remains the same. Funny thing happens in resorts and hotels across the world. In the morning when I dress up and I put my dark suit on like, like I used to in the hotel industry, I don't have name tags now or I don't have hotel tags now. Funny thing, people still approach me. Do you know where the restrooms are? Do you know where the conference is? What time is breakfast until, etc, etc. And I don't mind. I, I, but I think maybe I have to check, is there something here? But it's something in my body language. It's something they can see. It's something they can sense. What are you really good at? If you are put into an entirely different domain, where your expertise, your academic qualifications are not valid. Let's say we take you to put into a different business altogether. Okay? What strengths will you still bring to the table? That's your professional DNA. Regardless of the challenges, regardless of the nature of business, what remains the same within you? I think this is a question worthwhile exploring. Who am I really and what am I very good at? What can I do better than other people? Because that is something we don't want to change. We want to hold on to that. We want you to discover that. The English word discover means to remove the cover. Discover. This means to remove negation. Which means what? Is already there. We're not to, trying to inject it. 
is already those skills those things are already there you've used them we want to discover them just remove the cover right what if we train our people and our people leave to which the visionary leaders answer was this what if we don't train our people and they stay and that's when they do damage to us and I think that's the same question we should ask ourselves as well what if I don't train myself I can still get by yes or no yeah everybody say out loud together please I can always get by <laughs> yes or no I, I know as a speaker I can <laughs> if I don't put in the effort into my presentation you can get by you can get by but getting by is not your target you want to excel and that's when you say okay what if I can get by and that's not my target and if, if that is not my target then I have to put in the efforts to upskill to change just like on your mobile phones you have this new uh, you have these uh, alerts every now and then right to update the software version 2.0 version 3.0 etc right how about updating the software here the most powerful software the human mind my thought process my mindset my attitude my behavior my networking skills my learning skills am I upgrading that or not but I'm still stuck with the original version the original version is not bad by the way I'll show you how kids behave how we all arrived on planet earth we all arrived full of energy wanted to do things explore things no kid ever arrived on this planet like I don't know what's gonna happen with my life <laughs> right never they're all they either crying or something but they're active yes or no we lose the spark along the journey Age has nothing to do with it, by the way. But we lose the spark. Once we lose the spark of what makes us human, we become walking dead bodies. How many of you have thumbprint attendance in your organizations? Raise your hands, please. Use a fingerprint identification. In your organizations, let's say, we take a dead body for the sake of this experiment. We ask HR, take this dead body's thumbprint and we'll call it Mr. Motivated. What do we call him? Mr. Motivated, all right? We fit in his employee details. We fit a nice message into the system, which is recognized by the what? Thumbprint. The next morning, we drag in the dead body again. We put the thumb on the scanner. And what is your machine going to say? No, no error. Welcome to work, Mr. Motivated. No error. <laughs> there is no machine so far which can say, hey, the thumbprint is right, but this is a dead body. He, he's lost his spark. We're not there yet with technology. And I see across the world, corporate world or other places, I see dead bodies dragging themselves. And that's a loss to society and to individuals. With the power to leave an impact, we settle with just dragging ourselves. Okay. Shake someone's hand on your right and left and remind them, don't lose your spark. Say it now, please. Don't lose your spark. Your spark is the difference between when you're dead and alive. That's the difference, right? And this is what we end up like. This is a state of uh, affairs of someone who's lost his spark or doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Take a good look on the screen, please. Can he move? It's not a very difficult question. Some of you are not sure. <laughs> Does he have the ability to move? Yes or no? Will he move? Why wouldn't he move? The boss told him so. <laughs> How many times it is the boss who's restricting your performance? Raise your hand. No, you don't need to raise your hands. <laughs> right? Why wouldn't he move? He's stuck. No? That's what I hear very frequently. My life is stuck. How can you be stuck on a planet that is rotating at thousands of miles per hour? <laughs> Moving around in space at thousands of miles per hour? Nature is creating all the time. Nature is never stuck. We have people being born right now. We have people dying right now. We have so much happening. The universe is never stuck. It's when our mindset is stuck, we feel everything else is stuck. So we have to unstuck ourselves. So we welcome competition. We welcome change and we welcome challenges. These are the three C's I would like to focus on today uh, as triggers for your growth, which are number one, change. Number two, competition. Number three, challenges. See, in an ideal world, an individual would want not to have these three things exist. I want to live a life where I have no 
competition where I have no challenges and there is no change. And that would be a very boring, dull, miserable life. A life full of action would be the one where you open your arms and welcome the three C's which are change, challenges and competition. They bring the very best out of you. Change, challenges and competition. Don't be scared of them. Don't resist them. They are bringing the very best out of you. But most importantly, the whole idea of this keynote session today is this. Can we read it together, please? Out aloud. Don't be a prisoner of your own experience. Experience is a gift. Things which have worked for you in the past. But it becomes a problem when it restricts you. When you don't want to take any chances. I'll give you a little example today. If some of you might have come in earlier. You might have noticed this podium was up on the stage. If you came in early. It was stuck far behind. And I felt the distance was a bit too much for my liking. Okay. Ordinarily, I would just go with the flow, but be dynamic. You don't have to be a prisoner of your own experience. I made this change. I wanted to bring it closer to you so I could have the laptop here so I could interact. There are no, the, the, everything is changing moment by moment. Be dynamic. Figure out what's happening around you. And that's when you're using your full mental physical faculties. That's when you win. Because if you're stuck in a mode of, oh, that worked for me in the past, so I'll do it again. That's when you begin to lose. Don't be a prisoner of your own experience. Professor Stephen Hawking said some of the most powerful words about change. He said intelligence is the ability to score high on exams. Yes? Some of you are not sure. That's a traditional definition, right? This guy is intelligent, high IQ. Professor Stephen Hawking had a different definition. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. That is my core message to this audience here today. Intelligence is not your experience, not your academic credentials, not what you learned. Intelligence is, are you able to adapt to the changing circumstances or not? And Charles Darwin's theory of evolution proves the same. Any species which fails to adapt is wiped out, is history. Only people and species who adapt are the ones who win. So I have an interesting activity now to demonstrate in this room how difficult we find it to adapt to changing circumstances. So a little game. Everybody, please stand up. Professor Stephen Hawking once again, he said, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. Let go of what did not work in the past, right? And the same applies to markets also. Not only to human beings, but business world as well. Markets move from inefficiency to efficiency, right? What, are all the, what is common in all these companies on the list? All of these companies on the list. They are disruptors. They are people who are bringing in more efficiency into the market. What did Airbnb do? He said, okay, you own 10 flats. You're not living in them. You can list them on Airbnb and sell them. Airbnb is now competing with the hotel industry in a major way. When I stayed in, the, uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona in 2016, instead of staying at the Fairmont where my conference was, I rented a nice big three bedroom apartment which was half the price of my hotel, okay? And more personalized attention by the host because I received 10 messages like what time I'm gonna arrive, what are the facilities I need, uh, there was a, it was all well equipped. It's a major change. Apple brought in what? From, no, of course they brought in the smartphone. But it wasn't the smartphone around before that. The Palm Pilot. Yes. What did Apple bring in? So it's all connected. You use AirDrop and everything. It's convenience. They brought in more efficiency in a system that was a bit inefficient. They won the market. Kareem here in UAE, Uber, Ola, what are they doing? They're bringing in what? More efficiency into the market. Taxi drivers were rude. You know, they would overcharge you, the cars were not clean, they would not go short distances. Here comes an app which removes the middleman, creates more efficiency, it wins. Dubai and China, these cities are doing what? These country, the city and country are doing what? Creating more efficiency, smarter, cheaper, faster, innovative, right? They're winning. Elon Musk is the only individual on the list. What is he doing? Bringing in more efficiency, challenging the status quo, electric cars, solar roofs, sending people to space and things like that. GoPro, the camera, billion dollar idea. 
This guy is a woodman. He loved uh, surfing and he found it very difficult to take selfies while surfing. That converted into a billion dollar enterprise. Cameras were there before, surfing was there before. What did he do? Created more efficiency. IKEA, the owner could not fit the table into the boot of his car. He decided to chop the legs off, created a new business model of flat packed furniture. There we go. Uh, WeWork, you heard of WeWork? How many of you here in this room? So what is shared working space? If I have a company of four people, I don't need to buy my own office. I don't need to do all the fittings. I just go to WeWork. WeWork is located in the most central location in major cities across the world. I say I have a company of only five people. I pay a per person rent. I get a well-equipped space to work. They are challenging the big building model, the old model of real estate. It's changing. These people are doing what? Creating efficiency. Individuals and corporations who create more efficiency in systems which are inefficient win the game. Those are people who are able to let go of the dead leaves and rediscover themselves. This is a picture I took in India. We have Ola bike service as well. Not only cars, you can hire a bike. So what you see here is a little kid with a school bag behind. Some parents are busy at work. So the kid is going for tuition post school and he's using maybe what? 50, 60 bucks uh, Indian rupees to be transported back to home safely with a biker who was earlier doing nothing. This is the process of creating efficiency in a market uh, from individuals, right? What happens is you must understand this whole business about shedding your old leaves. The way you are, and if you're sluggish, if you're not adapting, you can get by if there are no three C's in your environment. You with me? What are the three C's? There is no change happening. There is no competition. If there are no challenges, you're in a monopoly market, you need not change. When the numbers are on your side. But take a deep breath in, please. Once again, high five moment. And remind your partner, the numbers will not always be on your side. Say it now, please. The numbers will not always be on your side. When the numbers are on, so this is what happens when the numbers are on your side. <laughs> you have the resources available, you know, you have technology. This is a major Indian government bank, right? So no competition there. Yeah. They are the only bank present in rural areas. No competition. This is what happens, there is no competition. Customers waiting. In these places, the customer is actually an interruption. What is the customer? An interruption. It's like, can't you see? I'm busy here on uh, Facebook. How dare you come in and, you know? And this was the reaction and uh, I got from a shopkeeper. I'll share the story. But this is what happens when the numbers are on your side. Grizzly bears, they find a position, comfortable position, where a lot of salmon is swimming upstream. Okay? Plenty of salmon, plenty of fish. You know what they do? The strong, powerful animal loses its hunting instinct. It will stand there, barely move. It'll move half an inch here, half an inch. It won't make any efforts. Open its mouth and just sit there hoping some fish is going to jump in. And this is what happens with many corporations and individuals also. Because the numbers are on their side, they lose their hunting instinct, right? And we are all born hunters and gatherers, yes or no? What was the unemployment rate in the year 10,000 BC, ladies and gentlemen? It's not a very difficult question. Year 10,000 BC, unemployment rate. Z zero, right? Everybody was self-employed, right? Hunter-gatherers, wake up in the morning, gotta get feed the family, right? Figure out a way. When we have a challenge, we figure out a way, right? But this is when you lose your uh, instinct. Uh, if you see this video, you will see the animals who have lost their hunting instinct. They just barely move. The numbers are in their favor. Because there's like a lot of salmon moving upstream, right? So they become comfortable. But this is not the situation. This is the shop I was talking to you about the other day. I was in Nepal and I had to buy some, uh, my mom wanted a specific uh, Kashmir sweater, which would be knee length or something, some very specific color, everything. So this was the only shop in the resort, okay? He had everything. But remember distracted species, zombie zone? He was in the zombie zone, busy on his phone. I walk into his shop with an intention to spend my money and buy something. And I did a little test. I said, okay, I could buy it tomorrow as well. Let me see how long this guy takes to say hello to me. How long will he take to make an approach and say, how can I help you? What are you looking for? Can I assist you with something? Well, 
I stayed inside his shop for 15 minutes. He didn't break the ice. He was busy on his phone. He looked up once and he was got busy again. And that was it. I left the shop without making a purchase. And I said, this is a perfect example of someone who's lost his hunting instinct. He's expecting me because it is a monopoly market. There is no competition there. He's lost that urge. And who's losing in this game? And for, for employees as well, when you work for another corporation, you think I'm just getting by and I'm okay. The corporation is doing just fine. You are the one who's losing more because you're losing your inner talent, your hunting instinct. It's very important. And what happens when you have the three C's? When you have challenges, when you have competition, this is not photoshopped. These are the three climbing goats of Morocco. Do goats climb trees here in the UAE? Some of you are not sure. No? no? Yes? No. no. India? No. Other parts of the world I've seen? No. In some parts of the world where there is no grass or greenery or foliage on the ground level, goats evolve. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. This is now, this is not typical goats, but they come together in teamwork, they help each other and they've adapted and they survived. And this is the hunting instinct that I'm talking about, right? Whatever is not improving begins to deteriorate. Even a rock if you leave outside, leave a rock outside for a couple of hundred years and you see its shape is going to change, the wind, the water, whatever is not improving but not stay the same, will begin to deteriorate. How about you? If rocks can deteriorate, how about human beings? We deteriorate pretty quickly. We have to understand that. I want you to read this all, everybody together. The best moments usually occur when a person's body or mind are what? Stretched to its limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. Not something easy. It is not work that makes you tired. Work is a rewarding thing to do if you enjoy it, if you put in the right emotions. It's all these negative emotions. Can we read them out, please? It's the boredom. It's the disengagement. It's the resentment. I want to take revenge from my company now. I will take revenge from my parents now. I will take revenge from my kismet, from my fate, right? It's resentment. It's negativity. It's fear, uncertainty. These are the things which make us tired in a work day, not work itself. Work is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be rewarding, right? It's when we add value. But these things, when our mindset is not working the right way, that's when we end up in, in the wrong direction. Achievement is addictive. If you want to get addicted to something in your life, make sure it's achievement. Make sure you got something next lined up, something next lined up. Don't wait for somebody to come and tell you what should be, you should be doing next. You're born entrepreneurs, yes or no? Born hunters, you should have your own list which is driving you. Achievement is addictive. It is in our DNA. It's how we came on this planet, not to sit in one place. <laughs> Remember? So, no toy in the world can bring that expression on its face. Huh? This is what in action? Achievement motivation. Setting a goal for yourself, nobody knows about it. I know about it and I made it happen. I feel better about myself. You want to feel more self-confident? Yes. yes. This is the only way to do it. Set goals for yourself, which are not imposed on you and achieve them, make them happen. That'll give you more confidence to go to the next level. Create your own benchmarks, be a pace setter. No job is too small. Put your heart into it and you will find some amazing results. Set the pace, don't always be the pace follower. I saw this video which went viral the other day of this baggage handler. Huh? How, how do you see most baggage handlers at airports? They sort of, why am I even here? And okay, you know, the vast majority are not. Take pride in what you do. Take a deep breath in, please. Pat yourself in the bag and say, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Or pat the person sitting next to you on their back and say, well done. Yes, good. We need it. 
you must work with a sense of pride because when you do that this is what you do you do the extra mile he's turning all the bags nobody's asking him to do it he's turning every single bag so the handle is facing the front he's an eagle and he doesn't even know he's been filmed he didn't do it for the award he didn't do it for anything he's setting his own benchmarks people who want to excel and exceed uh, and shed their dead leaves and rediscover themselves set their own benchmarks they don't wait for instructions to come along right there are no shortcuts neither in weight loss neither in success and personal transformation I want you to consider this very simple model which is up on the screen right now to help you drop your dead leaves. Start, stop, continue. Right? Just take the simple model. What are the things which I'm not doing at the moment? Which if I start, I will get a big return on my life. What is it? Could it be getting up half an hour early? Could it be exercising and being fit? Could it be joining an online course? You don't know, figure out what is important for you. If you do that, what should I start? Stop is very important. Huh? I think sometimes more important than start. Sometimes we are our own biggest enemies. What are things, behaviors, actions that I should do which are hindering my progress? What should I stop doing? When do I self-sabotage myself? The old saying goes, fall into a pit once and it's a accident right I'm, I'm walking on a street there's a pit hole in front of me I fell down it's a accident I fall into the same pit again and again and again and now it's what it's a choice it's a choice now it's not an accident anymore and those sort of choices are going to determine your life continue remember what's my professional DNA what am I good at? For me, it's how can I serve? Hotel industry, same DNA. How can I serve? Speaking, the same. I'm thinking of launching a version 4.0 next January. That's when I turn 40. Eh, yeah, <laughs> yes, 40. Uh, this January and uh, next January. And I'm thinking of launching a new version of myself. It'll be called Simarjeet 4.0. Yeah, not a bad thing to do with, with our life. We, we have we go and line up to buy the new Apple phone no there's people camping outside Apple stores hey I bought the new phone as if his uh, Emperor Alexander after he conquered the world he had the same expression on his face yes except he had a sword and this guy has an iPhone in his hand me I did this we should discover ourselves and the new versions we could launch in our lives right so start stop continue is an important model and so is this one on the screen learn unlearn and relearn what are the new skills I need to acquire I am where I am in life courtesy to all the learning that happened for me on the job right from learning how to modulate my voice <laughs> to learning digital media search engine optimization learning YouTube videos nobody ever taught me that huh? no one taught me how to go and optimize videos and do videos and be being in front of camera is very different speaking to a live audience you guys are very forgiving a live audience is very forgiving. You can fumble, make mistakes. The camera is not forgiving. It will capture everything, right? So once I had to, uh, a TV channel said, could you do come in uh, and do one minute motivational videos? We'll do five of them today. I said, no problem. So I told a friend of mine who was waiting at, for, to see me, I said, one minute video, five of them, that should be five minutes. I should be back in an hour or so, you know, minus the head. It took us seven hours <laughs> to get five one minute videos right. Those are the skills I developed. Nobody taught them. Develop your own learning curriculum. I will do what? Develop my own learning curriculum. I will have my own syllabus ready. Online courses, live conferences and seminars. What should I do to acquire the skills that I need in order to stay in the game? What should I stop? What should I relearn? Right? I go back every now and then to some of the core competencies of what I do. And it's very important that I get in touch with that again.
This whole business sounds pretty easy, you know, think of a goal and you can achieve it and set it. But what separates the dreamers from the achievers is this one ability. Will you persist when the going gets tough or not? Everybody can dream, everybody can set goals and jump and dance and workshops, that's easy. In real life, change is messy, change is hard. And only the ones who persist, especially when things go wrong, are the ones. Perseverance separates the, everybody together please, the dreamers from the change makers. There's one ability to persist in the face of difficulty, persist in the face of challenges, to not give up, to keep trying again. You never know which blow of the hammer is going to cut open the rock for you. You stick to it, especially when the going is tough. We learn it from animals. Look at this honeybee. She's trying to make a little nest for herself. Trying to pull out this nail, which is heavier than herself. She didn't give up. Persistence is what separates the dreamers from the achievers. And she made it happen. We learn it from animals, human beings. I'm not young enough. I'm not old enough. There's a hundred excuses or I should be doing. I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have that. Question is, what do you have? Don't forget to stretch yourself. Yes. Number one. Don't forget to adapt to changes. Number two, because everything's already changing. And don't forget persistence. So what takeaways? S-A-P, SAP. Stretch, adapt, persist, Str and do it all over again. Stretch again, and adapt again, and persist again, and go to the next level. Do what? Stretch, adapt, persist. Stretch, adapt, persist. That is why we're here on this planet. You see, the human body is most rigid, most stiff, when it is going into the cemetery or the crematorium. When the game is over, kalas, that's when the body becomes really stiff. Before that, we should be flexible. Before that, we should keep achieving. So remember once again, stretch, adapt, persist, and let the dead leaves drop. You guys have been a wonderful audience. Thank you all for being here.